Are you curious whether you can make architectural diagrams directly in Blender? Yes, you can, with some compositing. In this video, we'll create a quick model concept, non-destructive of course, and I'll show you how you can create a sweet workflow and reduce the time for post-processing your images. So let's get started. Start with a plane, go into edit mode, move the rear edge to create an elongated rectangle, then extrude up. Alt N to get the normals menu and press your calculator outside to make sure the normals are facing the correct direction. Go into object mode and adjust the size of the object. Back in edit mode, snap cursor to front bottom edge and in object mode, right click and move object origin to cursor. In edit mode, select rear face E to extrude and then extrude the top face. Extrude the two rear faces and then extrude the top face again. Let's check the initial idea sketch to make sure that what we're showing is correct. Go into modifier properties. Add an array modifier with a count of 2 relative x to minus 1. Let's see what works well with the constant y offset, so about minus 2.56. Add a second array modifier. Go into the first array modifier and adjust the constant z offset to 2. Scale up the base plane which will eventually become the context. Let's see if we can adjust the two array modifiers to improve the intended result. First try a count of 3 for the first array. And now let's try a count of 3 for the second array modifier. The front seems to be rather well defined, but let's add a bit more definition to the rear of the module. That's looking better. With a little adjustment, we'll make an overhang area by removing the rear bottom face. Let's hide the modifiers in the viewport so it's easier to understand what we're editing within the module. Now delete the rear face and the bottom vertices. There's a simple way to do this edit. What do you think it is? Add the missing faces by selecting the two opposite edges and pressing F. To continue to make the project more interesting, let's extrude two of the bottom faces. Scale up the ground plane and move the whole object higher. Let's adjust the front of the cantilever so the whole composition looks more balanced. And move the second and front faces by selecting all the bounding vertices. Again, slight tweak of the overall object height. And let's add a bit more detail. Control R for loop cuts, scroll up with middle mouse button to get two loop cuts. Scale the new loop cuts in the X direction so they move closer to the edges. Add more loop cuts, this time in the horizontal direction. Add them everywhere, on all the levels. What could be building here? Windows? Yes! Add two more loop cuts and then Control B to bevel them. Magically fast selection now so we can assign a new material that will be Windows. Add a new material, call it Windows. Change the viewport display color. We'll properly adjust the materials later. With all the window faces still selected, OT and select extrude to faces along normals. Looking good. Wait, almost looking good. Hmm, my topology seems to actually suck. Who let me make these videos? Let's remove that and clean it up. And once it's all cleaned up, add loop cuts. So we have the location of precisely where we want to align the new edges. We can select them with the vertex snaps temporarily enabled by holding control. Add another loop cut to the bottom. Extrude the faces inwards and assign the window material. It could be nice to add some parapets. Select the bounding edges on the top faces. And in the front and in the back of the building. Shift D to duplicate, escape to leave in place and extrude in Z 1.1 meter. Control L to select the link and create the new parapet placeholder material and assign the selected faces to the material. Time to add another material, this time for green roofs. Select all the top faces. With material.0001, it will be easy to get lost on, so let's tidy up the materials a bit. Adjust the placeholder color of the green roof material now. And we've got ourselves a nice building concept. We'll be adding more objects, so let's properly rename our existing objects. Time to add a new plane, scale it up, this will be the building's plot. Let's change the X and Y dimensions to 40 by 40. In edit mode, bevel the vertices only. Adjust the bevel width to 5. We're going to use this plot as a base to create a larger context with the array modifier. Enable a constant offset x distance of 4 and change the count to 3. Duplicate the modifier and adjust the parameters to array it in the y direction. Change relative x to 0 and make 1 1. Adjust the constant offset x to 0 and y to 4. Move the context plot so our building sits in the middle plot. Cool! Game of tic-tac-toe anyone? Next, let's add a camera. Change viewport to ortho view and go into view, align view, align active camera to view. Adjust the camera type to ortho and adjust the scale to make sure the context fits well. 
Let's make the camera proper isometric by adjusting the X and the Z rotations and relocating so we can see the context. Since the camera is too close to the object, some of them are clipping, so we need to move the camera further away. It's taken a while to make the position of the ortho camera correctly with the accurate isometric angles. But it will help in case we need to add more overlay ISO graphics in vector editing programs later. Now that we know what will be seen in the camera, we can continue to refine the context. And set the edges of the plot block module to create a sidewalk pavement. And with the cube blocker add on, let's add context buildings. Since we use the ray modifiers, if we're placing the buildings inside the plot in edit mode, they will appear everywhere. Let's add placeholder materials to the context. We will add materials for the pavement for the green areas and for the buildings. To make the context have a bit more depth, extrude the edge down 300 mm. Unhide the ground plane and scale it up to cover the context plot. Adjust the Z location to match the height we gave the curve, so in this case minus 0.3. Since the modifier based approach interferes with our building, let's apply the modifiers. And delete the two cubes in the center. Let's adjust the rest of the context buildings now. By moving the top faces up or down. And keeping the building heights clear of the main building we're portraying. Let's set up the render switch to viewport render mode and add a sun lamp. In the render settings, enable ambient occlusion. In shadows, change cascade size to 2048 or 4096 pixels. Adjust the ambient occlusion distance to 8 meters and change the factor and trace precision to 1. Let's adjust the world settings by switching the timeline to a shader editor and from object to world. Add a new noise texture and plug it into the color input of the background node. With the sun position add on enabled, let's adjust the sunlight direction of the world properties. Since there is no location for this project, the intent is to make the shadow look as good for the picked camera view. To be able to further adjust the background, add a color ramp node between the noise texture and the background. Adjust the contrast of the image and the render properties, all the way down to color management and change the look to high contrast. We can slightly increase the exposure to 0.2. Thus far, the base render settings are good, so let's start adjusting the placeholder materials we've set up. Here the context buildings material uses an ambient inclusion node that in a color ramp and then into a mix RGB node. The green ground material also uses ambient occlusion to help fake the shadows. The default material is the building material. It uses a mixture of two noise textures to add a bit of bump to the surface. Our world is full of smoke! Let's remove it by adding another background node in the world shader. Add a mix shader and mix the plain white and the smoke background. And with the light path node, the input should be its camera array. With this setup, when rendering we have the varied background, but in the view the plain white color appears. Base rate in the settings and materials are done. Press F12 to render. It should take a few seconds since it is in Eevee. And now time to post process directly in Blender. For single image, this may seem too complicated, but once we set up the compositing, if we change the concept or the camera, it will automatically apply the style. First, we need to enable a few more passes in the layer properties. Scroll down to Crypto Mode and enable Material. Press F12 to render again, and in the compositing editor, the these Crypto Mat layers should show up. Add a Crypto Mat node and plug them in. Plug pick into the composite image. We'll now create masks. By pressing Add and selecting the different colors that we want to use as our mask. To check if we have selected everything necessary, connect matte to image. The mask looks correct. We will use the mask edge and expand it a little to create the building's outline. First, let's plug the image back into the composite. And now, add a converter. Set alpha. Plug matte into both image and alpha. Whatever is black will now become transparent. Next, add a delay the road node and change mode with distance. Adjust the distance to 7. Now add a converter, math node and change mode to subtract. In the second input, connect the mask and the transparent mask image from the set alpha node and add an invert node. We'll now have a beautiful outline. Add a mix node and change mode to multiply. Connect the image and the outline. Adjust the distance in the dilator road node to make the outline thinner or thicker. The base with the outline is now complete. Let's take it a step further by adding a color balance node. Add an exposure node before the color balance node. And here's the result. So what if we want to adjust our concept? Let's move the massing and modify the array modifier properties. Render again and in this case same styling with no time spent for further post-processing. 
This setup is very useful for diagrams with Blender. In fact, we can take the concept diagrams to the next level and create animations, as compositing works on every single frame. So let's add a timeline window and do a quick fly through. Duplicate the camera and keyframe the position on frame 1. Go to another frame in the timeline and adjust the camera. Let's change the camera type to perspective. With the camera motion ready, let's change the output to video. Move the second keyframe further away in the timeline. And we're ready to render the animation. Go to render and select render animation. And look at it fly. This has been sped up, but it's still fast to render out a 50 frame animation. Here's the rendered output in real time. 50 frames is not a lot for an animation. Hopefully this shows you how powerful post-processing could be to illustrate architecture ideas with Blender. And fast when changing the concept on the fly. Once ready, adjust press F12 and it's done. And can the same compositing setup be used in Cycles? Let's switch to Cycles to find out. And yes, it does, since CryptoMath works in the exact same way between EV and Cycles. Of course, we would need to adjust our material render settings, lamps, and world background a bit. Yet this kind of setup could completely remove post-processing in apps like Photoshop and Illustrator. Thanks for watching. The file is available on Patreon and on Gumroad, where your support will directly contribute to making more videos like this one. So what type of workflows do you use for your diagrams? Let me know in the comments below and see you soon.